Welcome back to Burning the Pages, the series where I look at fanfiction I wrote as a teenager and make fun of it as an adult. Last time we were introduced to a new senshi on the team, Satomi. And in this episode, something different happens. Episodes 1 through 3 were written back to back, but now we're on episode X because it's never mentioned what episode this is. But what I do know is we're still in season 1. At this point in the series, there are five senshi. Kira, Shi, Junko, Satomi, and the newest member, Megumi, who was never given a formal introduction. However, I did dig up her character bio, which I'll quickly go through so we can actually get to the story. Megumi is fighting some gangsters. She has a reputation of being a loner, as Kira and the rest of her peers are afraid of her. One day, Kira gets jumped by the same thugs, and Megumi comes to rescue her. The two characters bond and become friends. Then, evil shows up, but Megumi's powers are awakened as sailor, I mean, pink goddess. Wow, uh, that's unoriginal. Which leads us into our first writing tip, plagiarism. Plagiarism is copying an idea from someone else's work and branding it as theirs. Someone who is plagiarizing a written piece may add a few original ideas, such as changing a character name or appearance, but the story still isn't theirs. While plagiarism technically isn't illegal, most schools will suspend or even expel students who copy articles and claim them as their own. That being said, you can still use certain ideas from a story and incorporate it in your own without plagiarizing. A lot of the fictional characters I write as an adult have two or three fictional influences, but still have a unique story of their own. So how does one influence without plagiarizing? Well first, ask yourself, have you seen this character before in another work of fiction? If so, what makes this character different than the other? If there is no difference, you need to rethink this character. I want you to pick out five story points from different media that you like and string them together and form a new story. Examples being from an anime, a play, comic, your favorite porn, anything. Wow, that is a lot and I haven't even gotten to the first word of the story yet. Similar to last episode, not much happens in this episode except for filler. But with all that said, let's dive into this episode called Senshi of Fashion. We open up on a news segment. The static beauty has done it again, ladies and gentlemen. Last night, there was a robbery in Hiroshima Street. First off, names should always be capitalized. It's a proper noun. Second, who's the static beauty? You want to tell me? She had short black hair and wore a green mask and a cape. I don't remember the rest, but she was really cool with her fighting abilities. That's not what I meant, Story. I meant who she is as a person. Is she a celebrity, a wanted criminal, a politician? Writing a news article or a scene with a news anchor reporting a story is very different from writing fiction. There's a formula to the style of writing and that's who, what, when, where, and why, and sometimes how. For this demonstration, I'm going to use an actual article I found on the Huffington Post called Reporter Apologizes for Calling American K-Pop Singers English Phenomenal. In the first two sentences of the article, it states who this person is. He's a news anchor from KTLA who posted a public apology for what he had said to the singer on air. The act where the offense took place is on the KTLA set. And the newscaster's apology is on Facebook. That covers who, where, and how. The third paragraph is what the newscaster said in his apology and why he apologized. He was criticized by fans of the singer online, which prompted him to make a public apology. And the rest of the article is actual excerpts of what people said about the newscaster. Now, there'll be some cases where certain parts of the formula isn't necessary. For example, missing person cases have limited details. These types of news articles have a who, the missing person, the when being the last time they were spotted, and sometimes a where they were last seen. With this news story in the late century, the only thing I understand is there was a robbery, and that the static beauty helped this man get his stuff back. But why? Is she a superhero of some sort? Does she know the victim of the robbery? Though I do give this story some credit for foreshadowing an important event, but not by much since this is still plagiarizing Sailor Venus's debut and a bit of Renee's debut in Mew Mew Power. Anyway, the five senshi are watching the story on the news. Static beauty! Can she be a senshi? I think that's a really good question because of the kind of know, you know, poker really She could be. They say that she has unnatural abilities like shooting thunder from her palms. That's probably why she calls herself the static beauty. Another thing I will give credit to is making this whole subplot of the static beauty possibly being an elite senshi not so obvious. You're off to a decent start, little edge, but you still gotta work on your storytelling skills as I'm already bored. There's barely any scenery description other than the paragraph that follows Satomi's bit of dialogue. She was lying lazily on Shi's couch. They were having a slumber party. Megumi was on the computer with Toji searching who could be the static beauty person. She started to print something. Great, but 
You can definitely expand on this. Tell me, who's hosting this slumber party? What does the room look like? How are the characters dressed? What are they doing? By rushing through the story like this, your reader isn't going to be very invested. Okay, I think we found five possible people who could be the static beauty. How? Based off interviews and rumors, this is what the internet came up with. Oh god, please tell me that Toji's research wasn't from 4chan or Reddit. Nothing good ever comes from those sites. Anyway, I'm gonna summarize the next paragraph because it's so boring. There are five people of interest. A YouTuber named Ladystar, a model named Curry, a crossdresser, a policewoman, and a high school student, Karu. The five century all believe it's one of these individuals, which causes tension amongst them. I think it's Curry-chan. Huh? Why? She has no fighting ability! Excuse me, you're not a Curry fan like I am. Curry's been in 30 movies in her lifetime, and seven of them included her fighting. 30 movies? Isn't she only 20? She's been acting since she was two. Jesus Christ, does Curry ever get a break? There's a huge difference between child stars and child slavery. My god, this woman must be exhausted. Also, Junko, there's something called stunt doubles. I think it could be the police officer. After all, she is one tough lady. <sighs> I think it's the crossdresser. He has to be strong and noble like the static beauty is. Well, I think it's the YouTuber since she does all those crazy videos. Um, yeah, you need to back up your argument. Saying that someone is tough or noble isn't a strong or valid argument. You need evidence. Also, I have a feeling that Kira believes the crossdresser is static beauty so she can fuck them since we find out in the future that she has a thing for effeminate men and it's uncomfortable. And now it's time to play. How would you fix this scene? And now, your host, Edgelordis. All the characters stated who they think the static beauty is, but failed to back up their argument. This is similar to the exercise we did with the news report segment. But the only thing you'll need is evidence. Why does Satomi think it's a police officer? Why does Junko think it's Curry? So if I were to rewrite the story, it would look like this. Well, I think it's Curry because she looks nearly identical to the Static Beauty. She has the exact hair color and physique. We don't know what the Static Beauty looks like, Junko. The only images we've seen of her were taken at night from someone's phone. Her face is completely hidden with that mask of hers, so it's not like you've seen her face either. Well, who do you think it is then? I think it's the police officer since she's very charitable and down to earth. She saved that little boy from getting hit by a truck a few months ago. She's also rumored to have superhuman strength. Remember when she carried that morbidly obese person out of Megumi's apartment? Yeah, it was rumored that she had super strength. Several news articles debunked that rumor. She clearly had other people help her. The static beauty is clearly the crossdresser at her school. He's so charming and kind, and good looking and elegant, smart, absolutely admirable. And did I mention that he was handsome? Kira, you're only saying that because you have a thing for effeminate men! What? How did you know that? I read ahead of the scripts for burning the pages. Anyway, I think it's Lady Star because she always keeps her face hidden, just like the Static Beauty. Ooh, I'm sorry, Edgelordis. You made the characters break the fourth wall, which isn't allowed on this show. Although, you did make a more interesting story than Elite Senshi. So, you get the second place prize! Really? What is it? Reviewing more of this story! Ah, uh, but I don't wanna... But I guess I have to. The five girls bicker for ten full minutes. SHUT UP! Oh my god. Toji was in the room, and this argument has been going on for ten minutes. Is he really that oblivious? Who decided to make him the mentor again? So, Toji suggests that the Elite Senshi as a group investigate each suspect one by one. Wouldn't it be easier to have each protagonist investigate each person separately? No, because that would be too easy. It's also mentioned that Curry's having a fashion show the next day because of another plot convenience. But, uh-oh, there's a problem. It probably costs loads of money to get in. Not if you pretend you're the models. There's another really long, boring piece about Hearts technology, which is an exact replica of Sailor Moon's disguise pen. 
This time, I'll skip over it. You're welcome. Chi, Junko, and Kira disguise themselves as models while Satomi and Megumi... They, um... well... You three go do model things. Satomi and I will pretend we are robbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This plan is stupid, but uh-oh, looks like evil's afoot. So, they want to be models, do they? We'll see about that. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, that's it for that scene, I guess, because now we're in Curry's dressing room. You girls are late. I told you to come at 3.15, not 3.45. The show starts in five minutes. We're sorry, I couldn't find any parking space. There are reserved spaces for all the models. Oh, get into positions. We don't have all day. She's a real pain. Oh. The models did a position behind the curtain. They were getting ready for a dance routine. Wait, dance routine? Aren't they models? Oh yeah, I forgot. Japan's model culture is very different than America's. Anyway, I don't know how Little Edge managed to do this, but this upcoming scene is so boring and yet hilarious at the same time. I'm so nervous. The curtain rose above their heads. People clapped and music played. Chi, Junko, and Kira followed the other models' movements. However, it wasn't going so well. The models kept running into each other. The spotlight landed on one of the models who shouted her name. Strawberry! What the fuck? That's a weird thing to shout. Then they kept dancing. A few moments later, the spotlight came to another girl who shouted her name. Clip! Cinnamon! Chocolate! Why are they shouting random foods? Are these models so hungry that they ask the audience what they like to eat? What the fuck is going on? I think we better come up with food names quick. Oh my god, that sounds really hard. Hey, Edge Lordess. You know what would make this scene really funny? What? What if the elite senshi shouted out the most ugly food names? I like the way you think. This is gonna be gold. Durian! Then she kept poorly dancing. Then the spotlight landed on Chi. Crowd. Avocado toast. <laughs> I like this story so much. So much better than the old one. Glad I could help. Thanks. Then Curry makes a grand entrance. Curry. The audience were astonished by her appearance. Why? Astonished is a bold word, so you need to expand on this detail. Like I've been saying for previous episodes, show, don't tell. You guys are a huge disappointment. You didn't remember the dance routine we worked on for six months. I'm Letty Curry. Your silver ring is missing. Um, random nameless character who we never see ever again. Uh, you gotta be more descriptive than that. I mean, look, I have tons of rings. Each of them have their own unique history and design. When writing about certain articles of fashion, make sure you connect the reader on why this item is important or special. All the jewelry I'm wearing right now has their own story. For example, the tiara ring with all the jewels on it I got from Long Beach Comic Con a few years ago. It's the first time I ever haggled with a shopkeeper. She wanted to sell me the thing for $50 and I convinced her to give it to me for $20. This mood ring I got from Disneyland Florida. I love it because it's super dorky and yet cool at the same time. This Baphomet pendant I got at a psychic shop. It's one of my favorites because goats are my spirit animal and Baphomet is a symbol of balance. My brother convinced me to get it because I'm into devil symbolism. Hell, this pendant even spawned the idea of calling myself the Edgelordess. 
I'm telling you these short stories because these items of jewelry are precious to me. And if you're writing a story about a model's favorite ring, you must explain why the model considers this ring her favorite. By the way, this subplot is never resolved, so for all we know, Curry could have been wearing the ring the whole time and may not remember she had it on. But I have looked high and low for it, and I can't find it anywhere. Then someone took it. Look for anything suspicious. Satomi and Megumi hung out of the closet where no one can see them. <laughs> I thought the static beauty has a little cater for all of her objects that go missing. <laughs> okay, Darian, you're up. Make me feel better about the last performance. Oh. Karin nearly pushed Kira. Kira was in a yellow bikini and white sandals that killed her feet. She went on stage and posed, trying to ignore her aching feet. Next, Chocolate went on after Kira. She has long wavy brown hair. Her pretty brown looks turned into something evil. Her peach skin morphed into a mud brown color. Her pretty brown eyes became bright red. Brown wings emerged from her black bikini. The crowd screamed. Oh yeah, I forgot about the bad guy. Your reader should never forget about important plot points of the series. But you shouldn't hammer into the reader's skull that the bad guys are in the scene, either. You need to make some sort of conflict as rising action that will lead to an eventual climax of a chapter or series. For example, there's one episode of Sailor Moon called An Uncharmed Life. There's a monster posing as a bus driver who kidnaps girls and takes them into space. Throughout the episode, as mentioned and later seen on camera, people who visit the shrine disappear after riding a certain bus. By having plot points subtly referenced, you're telling the reader that this is important. If the author or the reader forgets about an important plot point, you need to rewrite it. Come out. Come out. Wherever you are, since you... What's going on? Huh? Kira ran into the dressing room. She tapped Chi and Junko on the shoulder. It's Senshi time. Huh? What happened? Chi, you've been fighting monsters for like how long now? Five? Maybe six months? I think by now you would know what sunshy time means. There's a monster on the loose, and you need to get your ass into gear. Then she heard something coming from inside the closet. Kira opened it. <laughs> there was Megumi and Satomi. So that's where you're hiding. Come on and transform. Purple power, make up! Pink power, make up! Red power, make up! Blue power, make up! Orange goddess power, make up! were now the elite senshi. Show don't tell god Why do I even bother? Huh. Beautiful romance! Pink light escaped from her hands. The monster blocked its light with its wing, then sent it back much harder. Whoa. I'm curious to know what each senshi's powers feel like when it comes to sensation. Yeah, so Tomi's fire, so obviously when she attacks, her power will burn someone. Or if she attacks, she'll freeze someone. But what about someone like Kira, Junko, or Megumi? What does light feel like? Sadly, Elite Senshi never answers this question. Megumi just gets hurt by her own attack somehow, and the reader's supposed to empathize with her. Curry, transform into the static beauty! I have no idea what are you talking about. Hey Chi, if you thought this broad was actually a senshi, you should transform by now, but clearly she isn't, so most likely that means she isn't a senshi. But Chi decides to run after Curry anyway, leaving her teammates behind. Fire, please cut. 
The monster grabbed Satomi's hand and threw her against the wall. She was stuck with a sticky substance. The monster shot the sticky substance at Kira, who was stuck to the floor. Megumi was stuck to the other wall. Junko was also stuck to the floor. Hey, narrator, you want to explain to me what the substance is other than sticky? Well, I guess it wasn't important because the evil dude from earlier makes his grand entrance. I think his name was Yellow? Either way, I don't care, but he shows up. The Senshi heard a voice. <laughs> you, Senshi, are pathetic. Now, to get what I want from you. <laughs> wait, wait a second. What exactly did this character want again? His motives were never stated. A ball of red energy was forming in his hands. Hold it right there! Protector of what is holy! Guardian of ice! A pretty girl in blue! I am the blue goddess! For your evil actions, I'll melt your heart! Aren't you an ice goddess? Shouldn't you freeze their hearts? Oh, shut up! The sticky substance from before turned out to be an easily breakable ice. The four Senshi jumped back on their feet. She got out of the way before the monster could hit her. <laughs> ha! Comet Arrow! Said another voice. An arrow struck the monster. It was the static beauty. <gasps> wow, thanks narrator for giving the static beauty away. Surely I'd never guess by that attack. Are you ready for another round of How Would You Fix That Scene? I sure am. Great! This is a speed round, so you can only fix this scene in one minute or less. I'm ready. All right, Edgelordis. In your revised version of Elite Senshi, how would you fix the Static Beauty's debut? Clock starts now. If I were to rewrite the story, I'd mention in the news segment at the very beginning that Static Beauty leaves behind a trademark arrow that always has a green ribbon on them. In this revision, the Static Beauty always shoots a warning arrow before going into the kill, as she's a type of girl who likes a challenge rather than an easy victory. During the fight with the Senshi, before the monster can get his paws on Chi, the Static Beauty would shoot her signature arrow to distract it. That's when I'd have the characters recognize the mouse heroine. Congratulations, Edgelordis! You just won a free fast forward! You can use it now or save it for later. I'll save it for later. You never know when there's gonna be another uncomfortable sexual assault scene in this series. I don't blame you. So the Static Beauty has her own lame introductory speech. Attacking innocent models? Just who do you think you are? Excellent. Now I get to fight you and find your real identity. Orange Goddess. Attack the monster while you still can. I'll handle this guy. Okay. Kira pulled out an orange wand with a jeweled orange crescent on top. Wow, how descriptive. You know, the one time I want the story to be more descriptive, I get minimal details. And when I don't need details on how something or someone looks, I get it unwantingly. And in the weirdest places. Orange healing? Energy! The monster turns to dust. The static beauty was pinned to the floor by Yoro. Well, that was fast. How did that happen? So the rest of the story is badly paced because 15-year-old me got bored while writing the story, as she often did. Our protagonists end up saving the static beauty from Yellow, who just gives up and leaves. Just like Coley, which I think he died off-screen because he's never seen or heard from again. Anyway, the audience at the fashion show witnessed the fight that the Senshi are having, and Kira says this to the audience. <laughs> we are the elite Senshi, and enjoy the rest of the show. Keep this piece of dialogue in the back of your brain, because this will be important in the next few episodes. <sighs> hey Junko, are you sad that Curry isn't the static beauty? No, she was a pain in the ass. I'm glad she isn't the Static Beauty. That's good. We thought you were starstruck. <laughs> <laughs> How's that funny? Is it funny because Junko's attack is called Starlight Flash? Anyway, that's where our story ends. So, that was Senshi of Fashion. It's super boring. The previous episode was boring too, but at least it had some pre-hysterical moments here and there, which gave me a lot to work with. 
but this one, it just feeds through things that should be expanded upon. However, as I reread this story, I did some reflection on myself. Senshi of Fashion is a perfect example of why I decided to give up being in novels in the first place. I mentioned in episode 0 that I cannot, for the life of me, tell a linear story because I will get bored. And this story shows you what my boredom looked like at the time. Anyway, the next episode is where we find out who the real Static Beauty is, and I'm not really sure if that episode takes place after this one or not. Episode 5 of Bring the Pages is three episodes in one, so it gives me a lot of material to work with, and boy, is it bad. How bad is it? Till next time! <laughs> It's going to be a fine night tonight It's going to be a fine